Today we're going to be talking about why when I was a, a CS grad I chose computer science for one and why I wanted to be a software developer, what attracted me to the field and what were the the relevant inf what was the relevant inf information that led me in that direction. I want to thank Dev Mountain for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in web development, iOS development, user experience design, software Q&A, or the new hotness known as Salesforce development, that's actually a really good thing to look into, guys. Do a little bit of research. You'll find how awesome it is that they're actually offering a sales, Salesforce development role. Or if uh, check that out. But a uh, cool thing about Dev Mountain, they include housing in their tuition. So you can get up and go at any one of their four locations. And you get to live in a house full of other uh, boot camp attendees, which really just, I think, will help your learning process so much. So go ahead and check them out, devmountain.com, if you're interested in that. So there's two things I want this video to kind of get across at the end of it. One, that um, not everyone is like, uh, there's this sort of common misconception that uh, developers, people who ha are working towards being a developer think they're at a disadvantage because they're going against people who have been, you know, building websites or applications since they were like 10. And it's just not the case. And then two, sort of evaluate what it is that you're looking for in your life and what, how I came to the decision that software was right for me. So, uh, the first part of that is, uh, I, as a child, didn't really build websites. I built maybe one growing up, two tops and I didn't touch it for about a decade right so that, that hobby kind of died and it wasn't until I was about 20 that I started going to school and kind of seeing things and I wouldn't actually um, build I wouldn't code anything till about my fourth year in college and I, mind you I'm going back and forth a little bit and changing my major a ton and I finally had to make the decision of actually choosing a major I couldn't jump around and and uh, I ended up deciding that computer science was the best best route for me and part of the reason for that is and I, I by the way I had this same misconception too because I was in a class with at this point I'm like 25 26 I'm in a class with you know 20 year olds who are getting probably better grades than I am and uh, seem to know a lot more than I, I do and uh, I'm looking at their code it's beautiful mine's this bootleg busted code that is embarrassing to show off but it works right it, it works that's, that's that was really what I was going for it works and uh, I had this misconception that you know these these younger gentlemen and ladies were the oh man they, they just must have been coding for it forever it's, it's not the case right it just isn't sometimes it's just something we tell ourselves that you know I have people who think I've been coding for years like years upon years I I have been writing code for about four years uh, tops uh, maybe five tops and I've been doing it professionally for a year and a half so take that with a grain of salt so, uh, what, but one of the reasons I chose computer science when I was in school was after having bounced around between um, journalism, business, accounting, firefighting, uh, you know, fire, fire tech, I believe was a specific uh, name, and even going and getting like my EMT certification and my, um, my um, uh, dealer's license, uh, not drugs, but like casino dealer's poker license. Uh, so, I, I was kind of all over the place. Um, you know, my, my family was like, Hey, you need to kind of choose on something. And so I did what I thought was an educated decision. I kind of looked at the market and I said, what, where are all the jobs? And, uh, but by the way, this is before I've started a CS degree and everything like that. I have no, I haven't coded anything a day in my life at this point, other than an HTML and CSS page when I was 10. And I just looked at the market. I said, well, what's the best degree? And Every stat I would say was computer science. I, so I say, okay, why do they say that? Well, the three main factors that I could see was one that they get paid a lot, right? So we're always looking for the money, right? And uh, uh, but you have to be careful because just because it pays a lot doesn't mean it's the best job. Now it's it's one of the factors. The the kind of thing the the sort of example I throw out is that. There are nuclear engineers that make a ton, but how many nuclear engineer jobs are there, right? And so I'm sure I'm sure the ones that are working are making a ton of money, but it's kind of probably pretty hard to get that. So you have to kind of weigh the options. So you have to say, okay, well, what makes a lot of money? What what uh, has a lot of jobs? And what is going to continue to grow? Just because today 
Hey, there's a lot of jobs. But what about four years from now when I graduate and I have to be, uh, you know, an entry level scrub and I'm I'm just trying to break into the field and get that get that uh, experience. So you, those were the things that I looked at, and everything pointed to computer science and technology and and software. And that was what led me down the computer science route. And I, I, I bring this up not to just talk about my past or anything, but because there is this misconception that developers are out there who have decades of experience and just happen to fall into the role. And it's, it's not really realistic. And I encourage you to do the same sort of research about what it is that you're trying to accomplish in software and development and, and go from there. And it wasn't a something I even knew that I was going to like. I'm a very practical person, and I, I like the practical aspects of how I d- made my decision about what to study. It turns out that I actually really hated um, studying computer science, but I like the programming aspect of it, the little bit that you do in school. And when I finally decided to be a developer and study web development on my own, that was when I fell in love with it, right? That was when I was just like, oh, man, I'm digging this. I'm working on this stuff. I'm building something. When I first saw a project being built, that was when I fell in love with it. It was never in school. It was never when I was um, doing courses. It was none of that. It was when I was building my own stuff and having fun doing it that uh, I fell in love with it. And that was kind of what made me uh, know that this career was for me. I wasn't certain. I wasn't really even thinking about it, oddly enough. I think perhaps oftentimes when you're in school, you're just so stressed out, so tired, uh, in my case, very hungry, uh, <laughs> like literally, uh, <laughs> that, that uh, you are, you're just not even thinking about, oh man, am I going to enjoy this job? You're just like, yo, am I going to keep these lights on? We got to get done with this stuff. So, uh, but I digress. What I'm trying to say is that when you are looking for roles, I think that, that that's how I decided on what was a good fit for me. And oftentimes, we're so worried about, oh my God, am I going to have, is this going to be, is, am I going to love this? Am I going to hate this? And you really won't know until you do it. Uh, I wish I could tell you that you'll love being a developer. Um, I can tell you that I love being a developer and I love it because I can, I, I, it's something I can do outside of work. It's something I do at work. And today, it's like today on the weekend, I, I, I have a, I have a rule on the weekends uh, that I don't code more than eight hours anymore uh, on the weekend. So per day, by the way, that's 16 hours <laughs> on the weekend. Uh, so I, um, I have to, I have to have that rule. That's how much I love to do it. Otherwise, I kind of burn myself out, and I need to relax a little bit before I go back into the office on Monday. And I, I'm not maybe as rejuvenated and refreshed as I, as I want to be. So, um, but everyone, everyone is different. But I didn't really know that I was going to like it. And I encourage you to not fear uh, the unknown. Uh, sort of just accept the fact that it's unknown and and be willing to with your degree with your with your skill set whatever it is just go and give it a shot if you don't like it after a year there's always plenty of other careers that you can go and and try it out but at least when you decide to not like it and you say you know what man i understand that there's high job growth and the money's good and there's lots of jobs but i after after putting some time into it i thought i was going to like it and i just don't That's completely understandable, and I encourage you to take the same process of thought when you go to look for what maybe your next opportunity is going to be for you, where you say, how much time is it going to take to invest? How much energy is it going to take? What is, how many jobs are there? What's it pay? Because these are all, these are all things that are important, and sometimes people, when you talk about money, they, um, they, they always say money, you know, money isn't everything, and no one's saying it is everything. But it is something to consider, right? Um, I'm much happier now that I have food in the fridge than when I didn't, when I didn't have to stress about rent. And uh, when I was stressing about rent and I had a paycheck that was the rent check, you know what I mean? Where like that was the check that 95% (laughs) of it's going to rent. So these are things to consider, right? Um, the, The joke I say every now and again is money doesn't make you happy. But poverty definitely makes you sad. And so the, I, I say this because I, I want you guys to consider this in your life. The, um, the number one and two things that marriages and relationships break up for is one, adultery. Keep yourself to yourself and your significant other. And two, money. So those are the number one and number two. And I, I'm not sure. They might even be in the reverse order. I'd have to do a little bit more research on it. But 
so it is something to keep in mind as you're going out there. But I didn't always want to be a software developer. We're we're going in a we're going in some directions today. I <laughs> I didn't always want to be a a developer. I simply chose it because I thought it was a good hobby and I thought or a good career. And it turned out to be my favorite hobby of all time. And it turned out to be something that I love doing, partially because of the challenging nature of it, partially because. Um, you get to use it outside of work, which is something that you don't get to use in a lot of fields. You always have to, you know, how many times uh, do you really get to have a skill set that you can build projects in? I, I released a course the other week, and I'm building another one. I, I'm building projects to show people, to educate people in this, and I'm always learning myself, right? There's so much to learn, and sort of the, that was really what, what excites me about it now, you know, all the, all the practical stuff is I'll always have a job or there, you know, or I most likely will always have a job and the money will most likely always be, uh, you know, decent. Those are all great things. And what I'm excited about is that I enjoy doing it. I enjoy loving it. So I wasn't one of those people that fell into, oh, you know, I started at 12 cause my, my father, was a developer or my mother was a developer. My mom's a nurse and my, my dad's retired and he was a writer and a teacher and it had nothing to do with development. And I don't have any anybody in the family who ever introduced me to computers or anything like that. The closest I got to computers was playing StarCraft and Warcraft and World of Warcraft as a kid, right? And I just chose software development because it seemed like a good field and I fell in love with it when I went to web development and I enjoyed building things. So when you're looking for your career, keep that in mind. And also don't be afraid that you don't know if you're going to love it or not, because even if you don't, you're going to, you know, it's about the journey most of the time when it comes to this stuff, but make, make educated decisions. Um, be willing to take a leap of faith in whatever you do and work hard at it and you'll be successful. So that's, that's today's video. Thank you so much for watching it guys. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, support me on Patreon by the course course is coming soon and if you're interested in uh in, and uh supporting me can i patreon all that good stuff i'll see you next time bye guys hey baby what do you want to be when you grow up happy and rich that's pretty good Hey guys, if you're looking for a fun little project to do, I have my very first course out called Learn Angular by Projects Part 1 where we build a personal portfolio. It's about three hours of content. It's one project. It's not going to teach you everything in Angular by any means, but it's a great way to get your feet wet. You can go ahead and check the link down below. Get a, a coupon code, Coding God, or just click the icon.